Hello everybody, my name is Promise, and welcome to Europe Universalis 4, but as you've already noticed, I'm sure this is not your standard game of EU4. We're going to try out a very ambitious overhaul mod called Elder Scrolls Universalis, which, of course, is based off of the Elder Scrolls franchise. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, Skyrim? I'm sure the least you've heard about that. Now, the mod is a little overwhelming to look at right off the bat, because we're going all the way back to the dawn of the first era of Nern on the continent of Tamriel, and that's before a lot of the big uh, recognizable names like Skyrim, Morrowind, and so on, the kingdoms of the Altmer, the Bosmer, Khajiit, and Argonians, even has been formed. Right now we have a lot of independent little nations and clans, and if we want to make something cool happen, we gotta form that ourselves. Now a lot of the starting nations that are recommended over here are gonna be some form of Elvish, which makes sense based on the era. Uh, it just so happens, though, that elves don't really do it that much for me in Elder Scrolls, with the exception of the Dunmer and Morrowind. I like them a lot, but everyone else, kind of meh. So I'd rather stick with one of the more mortal races, and I'm thinking, of course, we have to jump all the way up here to Skyrim and play with the Nords. It's one of the most recognizable areas in, in the uh, world of Tamriel right now, because Skyrim was obviously a phenomenally successful game, so I feel like this is going to be the most accessible for a lot of you guys to kind of get into it and understand it. And I think we'll play as Windhelm. They are a recommended starting nation over here, fairly powerful in this area, uh, a fair bit of development, pretty good leader with high military skill, pretty terrible ideas though, which I consider a bit meh. We'll, we'll figure it out though. Once I form some new nations, hopefully this ends up being something better. So let's start up a new game in Elder Scrolls as Windhelm and see if we can form Skyrim. Okay, here we are. Now, buckle in, folks, because there is a lot that you need to be looking for in this mod. Like, so much content, it's kind of staggering. Let's start with something simple like National Decisions. Oh, look, right off the bat, a whole bunch of decisions and spells are going to be available because... Ideas and stuff, well, first off, let's just note, there's a lot of them. You can go all the way up to tech level 196. Yeah, that's a lot to worry about. There's quite a few idea groups, though, that have been altered in some form, including, by the way, I just love that there's a bunch of different uh, spell groups based off of the actual Elder Scrolls universe. That's pretty darn funny. A lot of stuff we'll have to take a look at here, and all of these are pretty darn good. We'll come back to some of that. There's a lot of different decisions we can worry about, including tons of formable nations. That's pretty fun, too. Uh, if you do get confused, there is a mod menu option here. This will help get you uh, informed on some of the mechanics. So consider this your kind of like help tutorial button if needed. We have a Pantheon to worry about. And every time I've looked at this for a um, for a test game, it's been different. There's always been some different uh, deities I can work with. For example, we don't have Alduin on here. Every test game I've looked at, that's been an option. The World Eating Dragon, not an option here. So we'd have to pick someone different. Diplo Rep, Aggressive Expansion, blah, 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 all pretty good. You know what? I like Fire and Shock damage, though, a lot. So we're going to try this one. Why? Because we actually have access to Fire and Shock right off the bat. Let's take a look at this. Oh, look, we have cannons from the very beginning available. Okay. Also, my infantry only do fire damage. Fascinating. The only shock available is going to be in the form of cavalry. Really cool, right? So, I mean, there's like a lot to look at there. Let's take a look at something like missions. Um, there we go. There we go. Oh, look, there's a whole load of missions we can worry about for the East Marcher. And as you start conquering more regions of the world, you get more permanent claims on other chunks of the world, which is kind of fun. So the first thing you want to do is try to unite all of like northern or southern Skyrim into one nation. Then we get claims on a bunch of other stuff for free. That could be kind of nice. But beyond that, we do need allies, uh, and nice and quick. So, um, first off, let's take a look at my rivals. I'm rivaled to four people. Iverstead down over here. Winterhold up to the north. These guys right here, and these little guys right here. Okay, so I think we want... Probably to... First off, I can't rival these guys back. That's interesting. Well, we'll rival Winterhold back, probably. Um, let's take a look at some other allies I might want, though. I know that Whiterun actually is fairly strong. They've got a couple of vassals and plenty of troops. You're allied to a few different folks. Who do you hate? You are hated by a couple different folks way down there. You've rivaled Iverstead. Okay. So if I also rival Iverstead, which makes sense, maybe we can pick up Whiterun as an ally, which would be very good for me for obvious reasons. Um, other guys that I might hate. Eh. No one here that makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, Nilheim may be over here. They could be kind of okay. What about Morthal? Who are you? Uh, I don't know who that is. I can't see them. Well, we'll worry about that later. Blacklight over here could make sense, but 
meh, I'm not sure that that matters. You know what, we'll just go ahead and hold off on with just those two rivals for now in case I actually decide I want some more. Let's go ahead and train up some extra cavalry and infantry. As much as it would be nice to have the cannons for the back line, I do think we want to make sure we have plenty of uh, troops for the combat with. Let's actually take a look at said combat with. It is 15 right now. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe a couple of... Uh, one extra cavalry and one extra infantry. Get me up to that 16 force limit as fast as possible. Or is it 18? 18 force limit as fast as possible. I want to make sure we have a full combat with with lots of flanking ability. That will make it very easy for me to win some key engagements. Let's put my ruler as a leader. A 3-4-3 three, three is not bad. No siege value sucks, but having the early fire value actually isn't terrible for me. And I definitely want to get an alliance with you quickly. Uh, we could try improving relations. And I guess I will. I need you to not be hostile toward me. If possible. Uh, I mean, we're rival to people you hate, so an alliance would make a lot of sense. Just saying. Uh, let's see if we can make that work. And in the meantime, let's go ahead and start getting some claims on some nearby little folks. Unless we want to go and attack Winterhold. Winterhold, I can't call my ally in because they don't owe me favors, and I guess they don't want any land. So this would be a really, really stupid fight for me. Okay, let's go ahead and just try to take on, let's say, some of these little tribes or something for now who should be relatively easy for me to beat. Oh, actually, wait a minute. I think we have an ability to vassalize, force vassalize some tribes. Maybe we start with that, actually, before they have a chance of getting much more allies. Yeah, that's probably gonna be the way to go. All right, let's go ahead and move the troops down here, then. We have... Ah, they got an ally, Nielheim. Okay, that's not gonna work as well as I thought, then. Right, 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 right. Um, okay, well, hmm... Now this is not nearly as exciting. Who else could we attack? You're a vassal of somebody. You have an ally. Tell you what, let's go ahead and start getting claims on you then. Since uh, you rivaled me, we might as well try to beat you down. Whiterun, I really need to be an ally with. Who else could we ally that maybe... Morthal is way up over here. But, if we allied you and be friends of friends, maybe this would make sense? Maybe. We can try it. Uh, let's go ahead and pull back with an uh, ally real quick here. Nope, now you're not excited about that. All right. Who else can we ally then? I need friends. Only tiny people we don't care about. Okay, well, that's not going to go well. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, until we get this guy to stop being hostile, there's not a whole lot we can do. I thought Windhelm was supposed to start with a bunch of vassals and stuff. That's kind of what I was promised, and it looks like that is not, in fact, going to be the case. Oh, good, we can rival these guys now. Perfect. So we may instead want to go for a quick war that lets me, uh, let's say, humiliate some folks. That might be fine, so let's go ahead and start sending my troops over this direction. I want to go into some immediate warfare before people get a lot more allies. This guy only has a couple. Uh, but I don't actually have... A war goal against you. We should. There's Humiliate Ruler. Alright. Alright. Get the troops together. Let's get ready for a fight. You're allied to a few different folks. If you have to fight both of you, that's going to suck. But it's an even fight at the moment. So I think that's going to have to be good enough. Let's try to get all my troops into one position. Let's see if we can find a way to deal with this. Oh, an ally! Yes! Okay. Now we've got White Run. That's actually going to be huge for me. Create personal union? Pardon de moi? What's up? You have no legal heir right now. Okay. Well, maybe a royal marriage with you would be very good. If we can get that, that'd be great, actually. Because um, we need to go to our government reforms. And we have two options at the beginning. We have autocratic monarchy and we have elective monarchy. Elective gets me some diplomatic reputation and such, which I think would make it a lot easier for me to get some personal unions and then annex people and stuff as needed. At the very least, we're going to get a lot of extra favors just from virtue of having the extra uh, diplomatic reputation. So I think it makes a lot of sense to go for that. Let's get our troops in position. Hopefully we'll be able to jump on these guys and humiliate the crud out of them. I don't think we're going to get to take much in the way of territory, but c'est la vie, right? Uh, what about you guys over here? Maybe we can start building up a spy network on you, but I need a diplomat at the moment. Let's see. Unassigned merchants, that's fine, but I believe there are no other areas we can go at the moment. Looks like all other trade zones are blocked out for me, and we're already where I can be. So we're going to have to ignore all of that. As far as some advisors, um, Fort Defense, Garrison, Land Attrition, blah blah blah. Siege ability, tempting, but very expansive. Uh, here's a fun fact. It looks like not only are there two abilities for each one of these advisors, but they cost you legitimacy. Which is really, really unique and interesting. Okay. 
Colonial range, culture conversion, new. Institution spread and embracement costs. I have no need for that right now. Are there a bunch of institutions to worry? Oh my god, there are so many. Freaking heck. This mod basically just throws an absolute ton at you. <laughs> and I don't have to deal with it like all at once, but yeah, there's a lot going on. Let's set my wandering caravan policy and see what happens with this. Like most places, Windhelm sometimes finds itself host to wandering caravans. On one hand, the uh, unique wares are highly desirable and a well-struck deal makes everyone happy. On the other hand, their arrival is met with some unrest. Uh, do you want national unrest and global trade power? Reduced unrest and less trade power? Idea cost reduction or nothing? I think I'll take the global trade power and hope that this does lead to a meaningful amount of extra money eventually. And maybe I'm allowed to change that policy later if I need to. I don't know. All right, so here comes some more cavalry, blah, blah, blah. Uh, our heir is chased. Well, that's definitely no bueno. Uh, other alliances available. Yeah, there are some. Solitude. Well, hello. You're fairly strong. Getting an alliance with you might make sense. And you don't like Winterhold. Perfect. Let's ally with Solitude. That's going to be my next ally. For doing that, it looks like we completed a mission. Hostile core creation cost on us is going to be uh, more expensive. Okay. Obtain a sea exit. We have a port, which means we get embargo efficiency. Oh, okay. I do like some of that at the very least. Um, sure. So getting all of this is great. Can I get a royal marriage with you? I need a diplomat. We'll worry about that in a second. Some people are breaking off some alliances. That's all fine. Uh, I think we go ahead and declare the war, like, now, before these guys can train up too much more. So, let's do that now. Humiliating isn't gonna be that great. And now they actually have trained up a lot of troops. But, this does let me do some stuff with you. I can't conquer provinces. I can just basically make you weak. And I can get some farmed out power, uh, power projection early on. So, I think we're gonna try for this. Um, mainly because I think a little bit of early combat to weaken some people is probably gonna be good. This does mean I have to fight two folks, but hopefully it'll be all right. So let's get on in there and see what damage we can do. How good are we? Um, not great. Minus three here, this terrain? What kind of terrain is this? A Dwemer Stronghold. Ouch. Ouch. Okay. No, yeah. I, was, ooh, wow, yeah, I should have checked the terrain. I didn't know there was a unique terrain type, though. Okay, so I we apparently are both giants. That's fun. Uh, we inflicted more casualties than we lost, but I can't say that it's been that great for me. Um, we could afford a few other guys. <clears throat> Would any of this good? Core creation cost reduction? Wow. That's pretty strong. Uh, it would cost me a lot of income that I really don't want to lose, but interesting. Let's go to my tech and focus on military, because we would like to get to the next level of tech as fast as we can. Level 2, improved flanking range. Not actually as exciting as it would be in the base game. So maybe that's not actually that great. I don't know. Um, White Run does still have some disputed succession. Let's get a royal marriage going. Okay, so we have a 654 as our wife. That's, no, yes, 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 that's good. Okay, cool. And with any luck, you're gonna get an heir of my dynasty on your throne. I hope that that's gonna work. I don't know, a lot of people moving around over here. Uh, how quickly can we siege this, though, really? Um, well, we could spend the power to blow this fort open. I mean, I guess that's a thing we could do. What else we got over here? So, legitimacy, prestige, corruption. They got just different symbols for everything, but I think this is all fairly normal standard stuff. Alright, so they're march marching around in my territory. Now, fun fact, territory that is occupied loses development over time. And it looks like they may be coming closer to attack me. Uh, I don't like the looks of that. Um, but provinces that are at peace, kind of like a prosperity mechanic, automatically develop themselves. Which is really interesting. It seems like these siege ticks are remarkably slow. Maybe we actually want to just go kill people instead. I think that may be exactly what we want to do. We just want to go fight some small stacks and kill people right away. Let's see if we can go fight over here in the woods, since this is defensive terrain for me. They're gonna send some reinforcements in, but I should have pretty much full combat width, so... They'll have cannons in the back row, but they can't do too much against me, and these minus two penalties for them are certainly gonna hurt. Okay, we won that fight, definitely inflicted a lot of casualties there. And we just got extra cavalry flanking ability. Nice. Alright, so we want to just go siege down some stuff and reduce his development. Forget the fort right now, not important. I just need to take some smart engagements and start weakening him. We're only here to humiliate him. I'm not here to do much else besides that. Humiliate, get me some power projection. 
Who else am I rival to? Winterhold? We should probably send them an insult. So let's do that. That's going to reduce opinion, but who cares? And it gets me a little bit more power projection. Not enough to get me, you know, like any extra power, but enough to at least get me a little bit of extra trade power and morale of armies. And surely that all counts for something. These guys still have low morale. If we can finish sieging this, I'll happily go jump on somebody and try to kill them. It feels like sieges are really slow. Either that or the game is performing very slowly. It's one of the two. Let's get over here and see if we can jump on them before they can get very far. All right, hang on. Uh, can we get over here and do anything? No. Can we get over here and do something? Yes, we can jump on you. Okay, he's going to get crushed. He brings in reinforcements. Doesn't matter. Stack one! All right, that's what you like to see. That's what you like to see. Okay, my troops apparently are fairly good. As long as we fight in good terrain, my, hill my troops are pretty good. Can we kill this other two stack? We should definitely try before he gets very far. Uh, yep, we can definitely jump on this. So that's dead. Good. Can we get you? No. Can I can force march at the beginning of the game? Wow. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to sit here and do this. So how fast does this... Um, how fast does the development go down? Is there any indicator as here, onto here as uh, far as the uh, auto development feature? I don't know. I don't see anything about it. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just means I don't notice it. I think you hired some mercs, by the way. Pretty sure. That's why you got a few troops there. All right. Yeah, getting a stack wipe early on is obviously pretty good. We want to go jump on these guys soon and kill them while they're split off from the group. Winterhold has a claim on me. All right. Let's go jump on this. Did you just buy some more mercs? No, they're the same group. All right, that's fine. Yeah, let's go jump on this guy. He's trying to run away, which is kind of okay. I don't mind him running away. I just want to catch him somewhere. There's a lot of hills over here. Maybe we can catch you here. Yep, okay. We're going to fight him in the woods. Not the best terrain for me, but if it lets me go ahead and do a lot of extra damage, worth. Golden Era for some people. Well, that must be fun and exciting for you. That's a stack wipe. Beautimus. Beautimus. Slewing disaster. Internal conflicts. Really? Wow. Okay. Um, might have to worry about some of that. If I can get... Let's see, we don't have enough religious unity. Administrative diplomatic skill. Yeah, admittedly, we don't have... We don't have a lot of skills. Uh, if we get some stability, we can avoid the peasants. Let's see if we can jump on these guys before they take anything else. I have low morale, but it looks like we should be able to still crush them. I have a hard time believing we won't. There we go. That's another stack wipe for me. Okay. Continue sieging whatever you can get your hands on while I reinforce from my manpower pool. This is a very interesting start so far. Um, who else can we be fabricating on? We had talked about these guys. Just don't think it's worth it anymore. You might be worth it. Let's go ahead and start fabricating on you. Just see what happens with this. Now, it's really unfortunate that I can't take some land, because obviously growing a little bit would be very nice for me early on. But alas and alack, no. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can jump on you and crush this. That's a stack wipe once again. I mean, we're getting there. We're definitely crushing him. You've got to be losing a lot by now, dude. How can you keep trading this much? He's got 3,000 manpower left. He's got to be dying pretty soon. What about you? You still have 14,000 troops, but I think you've decided this isn't worth fighting over. And I don't blame you. I mean, I agree. It's definitely not worth fighting over. I want to humiliate this guy. I just got to humiliate him. That's all I need to do in this war, and then we can be done with it. Okay, so we caught that out. Let's get over here. Now, the problem with this, all these one stacks is he can actually go and still siege things down. So, he can give me a lot of problems just by occupying my territory, but... Eh? A lot of other folks are trying to get some claims on me. I wish I could get some free claims, because that would allow me to just go and do a lot of wars. Oh well. Another thing we could do, actually, is try to curry some favors rapidly with Whiterun. That's not a bad idea. Huh. We have some extra siege ability on these guys. Oh, and it looks like we're about to lose that spy network, so let's go ahead and pull back over here. Um, the fort is unfortunately getting a lot of this territory back. Okay, maybe we can go and isolate and crush these guys. Yes, we should be able to in the woods. Not great terrain, but whatever. So, I'm at 39% war score. I definitely can't take any land, but can I humiliate you? Not yet. I want war reps. You've got 155 ducats. I want all of that, too. All of these are things I want. That's another stack wipe. My god. Apparently, I'm really freaking brawny. Okay. Well, we can't get into the fort and take this down fast enough, I don't think. Yeah, this is going to be too much effort. We just got to keep marching around and smashing. Let's carry some favors with Whiterun, because I think I'm going to use these guys to actually help me fight some wars and win stuff early on. That seems like the best way to go. 
Crush another one there, stack right there. If they're gonna just hang out, I guess we can go try to work on the fort. Yeah, let's just sit here on the fort for a little bit. 39% war score, never mind, he's coming back down over here. Just not getting much. At this point, I should definitely be getting a ticking war score. We've definitely humiliated you at this point, right? But I have to take your capital. Mech. Mech. All right. So these guys are going to get jumped on as well. I mean, we've held together fairly well here. Definitely inflicting plenty of casualties. But I can't get any more war score until we actually take a, uh, a fort. So we're sort of stuck with this at this point, huh? All right. Hey, we should take a look at some of these um, estates. I haven't been messing with them yet. Let's take a look. Governing capacity? No. Primacy and nobility for military power? Absolutely. Uh, what else? Army tradition, general cost? Mm, could do that. It's not bad. Sure, but it gets me influence and no loyalty. I don't like that. Uh, right of council? Sure. Monopolies on things like livestock? Sure. Mages exist. Can I do anything fun with you? What is this costing me that I can't do these? We have to spend a load of power to grant privileges? Bleh. Okay, I could I should clearly have gone for things with power first. That would have been the smarter way to go. Can mages get me admin power? Yes. But doing this reduces your loyalty, which is interesting. Mercenaries? No power from them. Burgers? Yeah, all right. Uh, we go for the Magical Governance. Get that extra power going for us. So now we're increasing this a little bit. Not by a lot, but a little bit. He's run away and there's nothing for me to do except go for the Siege. Alright. Can try fabricating a claim on you, and we shall. Let's say this one. Um, and we have six favors now with White Run. That's going fairly fast. You're not at war with anyone. That's good. I prefer to keep it that way. 24,000 troops. Yeah, you've definitely uh, gotten a little bit stronger, haven't you? Yeah, you have. And now these guys are going to march around and cause some freaking problems. Okay. You know what? I am going to blow this open because clearly I can't win this war until we actually take this siege. If you want to waste your time unseaging a little bit of land, fine. So be it. We no longer need more... Actually, yeah, we do want more claims on you. I want to be able to take as much land from you as possible. So let's go for that. Um, Looming Disaster is getting dangerously close. We have a lot of war exhaustion. And Rebels are thinking about firing up pretty soon here, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Nothing we can do here at the moment, though. Some people are supporting some dynasties. La la la. Still looking, losing all the ticking war score. Because I can't do anything until we get this dang fort. 7% chance. He's going for my forts as well, and he's just going to be causing some devastation. I'm curious what happens to the development here once you siege it. So right now it's a 2-2-2, two, 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 making Malachite. And what happens when it's been sieged? It loses one development. Look at that. Yeah, so getting siege is actually really dangerous for me. Really dangerous. Uh, we'll grab the military tech for the extra flanking range. Advancement of the mages. Alright. Not too worried about that at the moment. We can't take much of anything out of this war. Like, literally anything at all, except for freaking... Okay, there's some peasants. Uh, until we actually uh, get some power projection, there's not much we can get out of that. There it is. All right, 86%. That means we want to peace out before they can siege anything else down. So let's pull back here real quick. Before they can siege anything else and cost me some extra development. Humiliation, war reps, give me your money. Also, you apparently had cores against me. Fascinating. Well, you're going to lose all of that. Okay. So this will be fine, or... Better yet, let's make you break off your alliance so it's easier to take you in the future. And then we take something worth preferably a small amount of war score. No? All right, we'll take a couple. This will be fine. Okay. Okay. So you revoke a couple of cores, we get some money, we get power projection, I'm now up to 57, there we go. We gotta go deal with these rebels, we lost a bit of development out of that though, so I'm not really sure how much that was worth it. And then we'll go right back to going for the spy network, although this guy actually would like to be friends with me. Yeah, I'd love to create some personal unions on you, that'd be fun, but I, I definitely am not allowed to do that right now. Okay, so we crush that, I take a lot of losses again, but my manpower seems to be generating fairly fast, and now we have to go deal with some more rebels up over here. Yikes, dude. Okay, well, uh, fun. Let's take a look at our 
force limit. We can actually get up to 27 now? How are we suddenly able to get up to 27? How'd that happen? I don't know. We got a bit of time... I was going to say, we have a bit of time before we have to worry about some of these rebels. Maybe we should train some extra reinforcements. And I'm thinking a backline, namely in the form of cannons. So let's go ahead and start training up some cannons. I got some money to work with. I think that's worthwhile. Buildings? There's a lot of buildings. We could build a couple of churches, but I'll be honest, they're not worth a ton. Any trade ports we could upgrade? Yeah, if it weren't under siege, we probably could. I think we should probably try to upgrade my capital a little bit. Give me some more income in this area. Uh, almost can get another claim over here. We will definitely be doing that. Uh, Agatha and the Nordic people get a free stability. Hooray! I think that actually would save me from the Peasants' Rebellion. This is still going up because my character is just not very good at some certain skills. Yeah, and also Religious Unity, but I can't do anything against this right now. In Fricky, which is where... Freaky, 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 freaky. This one right here that I'm actually working on right now. Um, so the reason we can't do much here is you are a non-accepted culture, development, and this religion in particular is just hard to get rid of. The non-accepted culture is certainly a problem. Anything we can do to fix that? Nope, because you're only 1% of my development. Blech. All right. Raise mercenary hosts, organize raiding parties, and receive fleeing serfs. We can spend power, apparently. Well, that's kind of cool. All right, we got to go deal with these guys in a second. Let's just get me a few extra cannons and see how this is going to work. So I can get a second claim over here, um, and we will, because I definitely plan on taking some land over here. We have enough favors to now call in Whiterun, so we should be able to win a major war over there. Let's wait until that's done. Now we go over here, and we kill you. So if I want to declare war on you... White one rejoin. If we do that, holy crap, I've got the numbers on my side. Yes, okay. That's what we were looking for. That's what we were looking for. Our heir is industrious. Goods produced. That's solid. A foreign heir. Really? Hang on. Common. Hmm. Same dynasty as Helgen. Which I think is this guy right here. Yep. <laughs> this is interesting. So... Fun fact, I think, based on some reading I did, one thing we can find a way to do is probably kill off my heir. Or just make him abdicate. Get this person to ascend to the throne, and then we use that as a justification to get some personal unions. That could be fairly powerful. Whiterun, do you have an heir yet? No, you still don't have a legal heir. I mean, if we can get a lot of favors, I would love nothing better than to ask for an heir on the throne. Relative as heir, but it takes 90 favors to do that. Seems unlikely to work. All right, so that's going to get crushed. That's good. Let's get over here. How much money am I making? Enough that I feel like we can train up at least a couple more cannons. I need to make sure we have the strongest possible army if I'm going to do any of this. And I think we just keep getting as many favors going with Whiterun as possible. Winterhold declared war on somebody. All right, could be an opportunity to go and attack them. Winterhold is somebody I do not like. Uh, yeah, I would like to get claims on you. I mean, we might be able to get my other ally, Dawnstar, to join in on some fights pretty soon, too. With any luck. Alright, so these rebels are all gonna die. And we're out of time for this video. But, that's fine. I think next time what we're gonna do is jump in here against Muslift, or whatever you're supposed to be called. In fact... Uh, somebody's no longer a valid rival. Oh, good. That means we surpassed a rival, and it means that I actually gain even more power projection. Very good. Um, Riften? I don't even know who this is. This guy? Okay. Black lights. I'm just looking to see... You know what? We can rival you and get some extra power projection by taking your territory. This will work fine. So, yeah, let's go ahead and pull back here. I'm going to go ahead and just declare the war and go for it. I don't see any reason not to at this point. Let's just go ahead. We'll call in White Run since I've got favors with them. Hold on to Dawnstar. We'll use them against Winterhold in a bit. And Alfdand is currently being killed by Winterhold, which means this is the perfect opportunity. So, yes, we're going to declare this, bring in the allies, and freaking go. All right? So, this is a pretty interesting start. Um, not a lot happened in this first video. We're mostly just getting acclimated into this. I'm hoping to grow and take a lot of territory as quickly as we can and then start beating the crud out of folks. If you guys like this and you want to see more of it, you gotta let me know in the comments section down below. Traditionally, EU4 mods are very hit and miss. Some people love them, some people hate them. So if you guys like it, 
you need to let me know. Make sure you hit the like button, leave comments, subscribe, all that stuff. In the meantime, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Ha <laughs> ha!